call the all good city council meeting to order for tuesday august the 11th 2020 um, pursuant to the governor's executive order number 51 and in light of the covid 19 pandemic the open public meetings of the all good city council are being held via electronic means with limited public access and as usual, when our meetings begin, we're going to start with the invocation and the Pledge of Allegiance. I will ask Mr. Ron Graves if he would mind doing the invocation and if uh, Mr. Morrison would lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. If everyone would stand, please. Ms. Flat, would you please call the roll? Honorable Mayor Fowler. Present. Honorable Vice Mayor Norris. Present. Honorable Councilman Bilbury. Present. Honorable Councilwoman Hawkins. Present. Honorable Councilman Hill. Here. I would ask that you now consider the agenda and the minutes uh, of our last meeting uh, agenda as presented for tonight you should have had that in your package earlier and had a chance to review that um, I think we did make uh, an addition uh, instead of seven items there will be eight items on the agenda um, and as for the minutes I will ask you if you've had a chance to look those over if there are any corrections that need to be made at this time. All right, I'll entertain a motion to consider approval of tonight's agenda as presented i'll make a motion i'll, I'll second thank you mr hill miss flat mayor fowler yes vice mayor norris yes honorable bilberry yes honorable hawkins yes honorable hill yes all right if there are no corrections or uh, additions changes to the minutes from the July 14th meeting. I'll also entertain a motion to uh, approve those as presented. I'll make a motion. I'll second. Ms. Flat. Mayor Fowler. Yes. Vice Mayor Norris. Yes. Honorable Bilberry. Yes. Honorable Hawkins. Yes. Honorable Hill. Yes. Well, it looks like we have no old business, so moving right on to new business, we are considering approval of the um, project Green Mountain Water and move that potentially to bidding the project. Um, for those of you who haven't had the benefit of um, hearing about the Green Mountain Water Project, I'd like to ask Mr. Morrison if he would to explain that to us and as far as our participation versus the county. So this was a request from the county that we look at this project as a possibility of extending the Spring Creek water line down into the Green Mountain area to serve an additional what we 
felt like would be at least 12 residents who currently do not have um, clean water available. They're using wells that um, have sulfur water and are unusable at many times. And so they presented this to us and asked us to meet with the residents to see what the possibility was and how much the project would cost. Uh, the estimated cost of the project is $270,000, and the county has agreed to pitch in $150,000 to offset the cost, leaving us with $120,000 left uh, to pay for the project. We met with the residents. Uh, we needed at least an additional 12 taps uh, and an estimated $2,000 a tap, uh, plus an additional monthly fee for 25 years to maintain that. Um, and so those residents agreed, and we didn't get just 12, we got 15 taps. And so they are on board and willing to pay for this to receive the water service. Uh, so this will put in a pump station, a booster station, farther back down on Spring Creek, which will push the water over the hill and down into the Green Mountain and up into the end of the valley there. And so this, um, this is where we are at today, and we're just asking for approval of the project and allow us to move it to the bidding phase. And uh, once we get that bid, we'll know the final cost for the residents and we'll apply the county's $150,000 and uh, try to add this with the Buck Mountain Water Pump Project to get a better price on the two combined. So this is just budget neutral, right? I mean, so is that what I'm hearing is that the county pitches in a portion, we pitch in a portion, but our portion is then funded by the taps and this monthly fee? Yes, we'll offset our cost. So there'll be additional fees that we'll incur, you know, depreciation will go on the schedule, there'll be some maintenance employees, but um, these folks needed water, and one of the county's objectives was to look at areas that weren't being serviced by clean drinking water, and this was one of those areas. They had tried to apply for a grant, and it just didn't qualify, it wasn't going to serve enough, and so we worked out this opportunity that the county would do a cost share, and the residents are willing a portion of the rest of it to help us get it there. And this is part of our water district, so it's kind of our responsibility. It, this is it is part of our water. Our it is part of our water district, but we also explained to the county and the residents that we couldn't justify three hundred thousand dollars for twelve residents and make the rest of our ratepayers pay that. Uh, and that's where the county agreed to chip in and help offset the cost, and then the residents have agreed to pay some additional monies to help us offset those costs so that they can receive the water so they are willing uh, to make those sacrifices to do that. Are there any other questions? No. All right, I will entertain a motion then to uh, approve the Project Green Mountain Water and move it to the bidding process. Make a motion. I'll second. Mr. Black. Mayor Fowler. Yes. Vice Mayor Norris. Yes. Honorable Bilberry. Yes. Honorable Hawkins. Yes. Honorable Hill. Yes. Item number four, consider approval of Project Buck Mountain Water Pump and move it to the bidding process. Um, this we had discussed potentially uh, might help us some in the item that we just discussed um, with uh, putting uh, the water pump as well as connecting it maybe somehow with the Green Mountain Project. And Mr. Morrison, if you'd like to tell the public a little bit more about how that works. The Buck Mountain water pump is uh, sitting at a tank that belongs to Cookville and it pulls water from that tank and pumps it up the mountain. That is currently an in-ground system that is, uh, I think the pumps are a 250 gallon a minute pump and we're going to move that station out of the ground to an above ground station which is safer, easier and more convenient to operate and work on as well as increase each of those pump capacities to 350 gallons per minute uh, currently, the one pump at the station, when it kicks on, will stay on for about 22 hours straight uh, before it kicks off. So it gets about a two-hour break before it starts that cycle over. So this will improve the water that's on the mountain, will allow the pump to fill the tank and keep the pressures up better. Uh, it won't have to run as much, and it will allow the tank to turn over more because this pump will fill the tank up 
and then shut off, allow the tank to drain down, and then kick back on and fill the tank back up. So this will improve our service in the area um, and help us keep the water across the mountain with better pressure, uh, less run time, and turn the tank over and keep better, better volume on the line. And do I understand that we um, have a estimated project cost, but we also received a grant to offset that? Correct. Sorry, forgot that part. The estimated project cost is $165,000. The governor released the uh, local government support grants that we applied for and got. Basically, we had to turn in a letter. Uh, this is the grant we wrote for twice. It is a grand total of $127,521 for the grant, which leaves us being out about $37,500. Um, so we feel like this is a good time to make this change and improve our water system and continue to work on improving the system. Uh, we have made some strides in improving that. Um, the tank and the pump are on a high tide telemetry system which allows us to see those in real time, see how much water's in the tank, see which pumps are on, turn the pumps on or off if we need to for by cellular device. So Victor and I have ability to control those pumps and see what they're doing. And that way, if we have a problem, we get an earlier notification and we can respond quicker as well. Um, so we have made some efforts to work on improving the operation of that system. And this is the next step in doing that. at the same time any chance that uh, I mean I, guess, I assume our goal would have the same contractor for both these projects or that would be the hope and that we could get a better better, uh, better price on it because it's makes it a bigger project makes it more feasible for them to have the crews here and we can get uh, get this done a little bit cheaper I think so it'll save us money uh, all around hopefully which is always my goal so Further question? No. All right. I would consider a motion to approve the um, project Buck Mountain Water Pump and move it to the bidding process. I'll make the motion. I'll second. Ms. Black? Mayor Fowler? Yes. Vice Mayor Norris? Yes. Honorable Bilberry? Yes. Honorable Hawkins? Yes. Honorable Hill? Yes. Next item, consider approval to declare a surplus the military paver. Uh, I understand that is a piece of equipment that we got some time ago. Yes, we've had this for several years. Uh, it was actually here when the rail trail project was completed. Um, when we received this, it was uh, had not been running in a while, had some new tracks. It was a fairly new piece of equipment just had been sitting. And so as part of the exchange, Rogers Group uh, asked if they could borrow it to work on the rail trail uh, in exchange for upgrading it, fixing any parts that weren't working, and showing us how to operate it. And we had hoped that we'd be able to run it and keep it up, but I just don't have enough manpower to do that uh, or enough equipment to do it. So at this point, it's been sitting for a while, so we think it's just best to surplus it and, and move it on out of here. on the rail trail I mean I know we're trying to predict the future here but you know it, when the rail trail gets ex expanded hopefully right uh, is there any need there for, for this piece of equipment I, I, I don't know what a military paver is it's 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 basically just a big it's a regular paving machine but this is a track machine and it's just green and it you, comes in the you military don't anticipate any need, I well guess uh, I'm, I'm afraid by the time we do need it that it's going to be down and need repair and at that point it's going to cost you more to fix it and I don't think it's going to save you any money because most of the paving companies you would hire would already have the equipment to do it anyway. Any other discussion or questions? If not, I'll entertain a motion to um, declare a surplus the military paver. I'll make a motion. Is there a second? I'll second. I'll let the tie go to Ms. Hawkins. All right. Ms. Flat. Mayor Fowler? Yes. Vice Mayor Norris? Yes. Arnable Bilberry? Yes. Arnable Hawkins? Yes. Arnable Hill? Yes. 
All right, item number six is consider approval of a one-time bonus in the amount of $500 for frontline city employees working through the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, I, I know that this was brought up at last month's meeting and um, it has been requested to be put back on our agenda, so it is here. Councilman Bilbrey requested this to be placed back on the agenda. It is the attorney's opinion that if you wish to pass this, that we do so as an ordinance, uh, which will require two readings. This is a total budget amendment of $23,000. 20250 of this will come from the general fund balance. 2750 of this would come from the water sewer fund balance. And uh, you have a breakdown by department of what, where that money is going. If you want me to go through those in detail, I can. I don't I don't really think that's necessary. I mean it it all adds up to uh, twenty three thousand. Right. That's correct, yes. And this is money that we have not budgeted for, correct? That is correct. Uh, no employee was penalized, lost any pay, lost any um PTO time or any vacation or anything like that while this was, or while it's still going on for that matter? They have not, no. Okay. Uh, and they are scheduled to receive uh, a, a, at least one bonus that we have budgeted for. That's correct. It would be a $300 Christmas bonus. Okay. And this money would have to come out of the general fund. Part of it would come out of general, general fund, fund balance, which is a total of 20250 with the remaining 2750 coming from the water sewer fund balance uh, based on where those employees are employed. Uh, they're departmentalized, so you have some of them water sewer, and then you have public works, you have sanitation, you have uh, the police department, and you have the administration department. I um, don't have that in front of me right now. I think the general fund is roughly $6 million and the water sewer fund is roughly 1.9 or right at $2 million. Do you anticipate any kind of excess revenue from this year's budget? I know you're, again, try asking you to predict the future, but um, uh, what's your prediction? Always my goal. Um, last year, I think I told you last night we were anticipating about $80,000 extra. We ended up with $520,000 extra. Um, we have surplus several items that we will sell. Of course, some of those will go to the drug fund, some will go to the general fund. Um, you all have surplus a couple pieces of property that we intend to sell in auction. Um, so we continually work to find ways to save money. So I'm not saying that we can't find it, but we we're always monitoring to make sure we're spending wisely and not wasting money. So we will work to find it and make sure we don't go over it. It's always my goal. Well, sometimes that's the goal, but it's not right. necessarily the reality, yeah, right? It doesn't always happen, but we try our best. And we do have the large expenditure this year of the fire truck, right. correct? So the Pierce fire engine has been ordered. That was a $638,000 truck. If you make the motion, it needs to be a motion to approve a first reading, and it is Ordinance 647-20. I'll make the first motion. I second. Ed, but my son-in-law does work here. Everybody knows that. But when I walk in that door, he's an employee just like everybody else. And they was around those people that tested positive at the rest home. And 
So I feel like they deserve it. All right. There's been a motion and a second to approve on first reading ordinance number 647-20. Um, that will be first reading tonight. Um, if it passes, then there will be next reading uh, will be in September, and it will have to have a public hearing as well at that time. So um, I'll ask Ms. Flatt then, if she would please, to call the roll. Mayor Fowler? No. Vice Mayor Norris? Yes. Honorable Bilberry? Before I vote, I must state I have a daughter that works for the city. This will impact her, but it will also impact the other 45 employees of the city. So I vote yes. Honorable Hawkins? Yes. Honorable Hill? Yes. Okay, Ordinance 647-20 has passed on first reading and it will be scheduled for a public hearing and second reading on September 8th. Item number seven is to consider approval of a professional agreement with Kimley Horn to conduct an always stop analysis at Main Street, which Fourth uh, Avenue and Second Avenue. And most of you may have heard the name Kimley Horn before because we have used them in the past for um, their services. And Mr. Morrison, do you want to explain to us why that we need to look at this? So we've had two traffic concerns that have come to us and we've looked at several ways to try to address these. Uh, the two traffic concerns are 4th Avenue and Main Street. There is only a single stop sign on Main Street as you approach uh, and traffic gets backed up there and it is difficult to get out. The second traffic concern has been 2nd Avenue North and Main Street for a while. Um, with the improvement of the downtown business district and the continued growth there it has become more of a concern and folks are worried about getting hit pulling out there. We cannot just go put up a stop sign in those areas without um, a traffic consulting engineer. Uh, MUTCD standard requires that if we do not have one on staff that we consult with an engineer to do a traffic study and look at these two intersections and make sure of what needs to be done. And so we have given them our suggestion for the always stops and they will review that and look at any signage pattern or traffic pattern shifts that would need to be made to achieve that. And if they do not feel that that is going to be adequate or appropriate, they will address that to us as well. Uh, this is going to cost $5,900 to do that. And it will come from State Street Aid um, as an allowable expense to improve our traffic flow. So they're going to take all of the data for traffic um, they haven't given me a timeline. I would say they would do at least a week's worth of data uh, to see what weekend, daytime, day, school traffic, try to get all of those different things. Um, they'll look at crash analysis and several other areas and then they'll come up with a proposal and sit down with us and go over that and say, here's what we found, here's what we recommend, and here's how we recommend you do that. And so once we get that information, we can proceed on with putting up stop signs which we can do very easily. It's just a matter of making sure we, we meet all the requirements. So they'll be doing traffic counts? Yes. We, we will be we'll give them well. the, I don't, uh, don't think they'll do speed. I'm not sure. That may be part of a crash analysis to look at what speed effect in those locations would be. And if we need to adjust it, I'm not sure exactly. They'll sit down with us and go over all that before we get really into it. Now we will be putting out the traffic counters and getting them the numbers based on whatever timeline they request us to put those out. And so we'll get that data and send it to them and then we'll give them data from our systems um, on what we have in the system for, the, for those numbers. Any other questions? Hearing none, I will ask if we want to um, have a motion for to approve this agreement with Kimley Horn to conduct an all-way stop analysis at the 4th and Main and the 2nd Avenue North and Main 
um, avenues that we've discussed. I'll make a motion. I'll second. And I'd like to see the report when it comes. When you're yes. all done, I assume you're bringing it back here. Yeah, I'll bring you everything. Uh, we'll sit down and do initial meeting with them, uh, lay out an appropriate timeline and what we're looking for, and then go from there. Are they definite? Are they by definition like? I, do they do traffic consulting? Is that what they, they do? Are they more of kind of a they do uh, a lot of things, but they have a traffic engineer on staff who will do this. Mm -hmm. Mayor Fowler? Yes. Vice Mayor Norris? Yes. Arnable Bilbury? Yes. Arnable Hawkins? Yes. Arnable Hill? Yes. Item number eight is a request for proposal for the park for phase one. And we have looked at that, but um, Mr. Morrison, I, I guess we don't have the the map so everyone can know what yeah. what we've looked at is phase one and i have some available if anybody wants to see them if they can stop by and take a look at them so phase one was intended to include an entrance a parking lot a bathroom facility a playground and a walking trail around about half of the park uh, to get over into a later phase and open up the green space in the middle to allow us to use that we have also been in talks with the Upper Cumberland Development District about a Blue Cross Blue Shield Healthy Places grant, uh, which I sent you an email, email today, uh, in which one of their footprint proposals is an, a fitness area, fun area combination. So it has a outdoor fitness equipment. It has the um, playground. Of course, it's all blue themed for Blue Cross Blue Shield. Um, and so we're reviewing that option. They also had one that had a small pavilion with it um, that I think would be okay at this location of the park. If you come in and had that blue themed items there at the beginning of the park, I don't think that's a big deal. Uh, we originally looked at the Blue Cross Blue Shield to see if they could do the whole park, but everything in the park was gonna be blue. I think that might have been just a little bit too blue for me. But I think we wanna maintain some of the original intent with the character of our park and so I think just handing the whole thing over to someone else wouldn't be appropriate. However, I do feel maybe doing a smaller portion of that in this area would be okay, and it would allow us to open up the park and allow it to be usable to the public and give them something to go do at the park. They could walk, they could play, they could work out, uh, they could have some green space if they want to sit out under the trees and do some things, and I think that would be a real benefit and a real good start for the park. So it may be with the Blue Cross Blue Shield that in, you know, the design firm wouldn't have a whole lot to do except to help us to fit the other components in around what these components would be if we chose to go that way. But I think they could help us with that, how we make it fit, and how we make all of this work together and look really nice. Okay, my question would be then, do we need to get an okay from Blue Cross Blue Shield before we then identify the other components of phase one that Blue Cross is not going to be involved in? I don't necessarily think so. I think if we do a architect to design this, if the Blue Cross Blue Shield fell out, I think the architect could fill those components in as well and help us replace them one way or the other. Um, so I think what we're looking for is an overall what does phase one really look like and which direction do you all want to go with it so that they could oversee it and make sure that all the components fit well. So one way or the other, whether Blue Cross Blue Shield happened or not happened, I think they could help you be instrumental in how we make those adjustments and how we make it work best for us. I would say the master plan, the overall entire master plan and phasing was about $44,000 for the design. I don't anticipate this would be that much, but I think it would be a key component to be sure that we're moving in the right direction and getting what we want from our park. Well, I think that I can speak for all of us up here is that we're excited about the park. We want to see something happening about the park and this would be a, a good first step. We've still got the um, 
rendering or the photograph out there of what we had we designed. It's there on Main Street for people who want to stop and take a look at it. Um, it. I don't know that we have it on display downstairs anymore, but... Um, it is. It's, it's down in the lobby. <laughs> okay. So it may be plastered over with COVID warnings. No, I, I don't know. It's still there. <laughs> okay. Um, so um, I, th I think this is a good, you know, phase one option and that, um, you know, there's no time like the present. If we're going to get started on it, let's get started on it. So um, I would entertain a motion for do to do a request for proposals for the park for phase one. I'll make the motion. Second. Mayor Fowler? Yes. Vice Mayor Norris? Yes. Honorable Bill Boot? Yes. Bill Boot? <laughs> Honorable Hawkins? Yes. Honorable Hill? Yes. All right, Mr. Morrison. Uh, I think it's now time you've done a lot of reporting already, but if you would, if you have anything left you'd like to tell us. We have been working diligently, Public Works, on Mill Street. I don't know if you've drove through there and looked at the difference. Uh, we were losing the roadway. We have uh, secured that now and continue to work on it. We have some additional cleanup left to do over there, but it's come a long ways. Uh, of course, once all that's completed, paving that will be a big concern. Uh, it's always been a goal to get it paved, but we had to address the, the chipping away of the road before we started putting new pavement down. Um, so we continue to work on that. Uh, we're also reviewing if we can widen it and get some additional pavement there to give us a better road. Uh, so we continue to work on that. Um, Christmas parade, of course, is coming up the second Saturday in December. Uh, Christmas tree lighting will be the first Saturday in December. So we'll, uh, I'll get you those dates and we'll start preparing that. Uh, it's already that time of year again, so it won't be long until you'll be seeing fireworks again. As well as backup dates. <laughs> Backup dates and a final cancellation date. <laughs> Thank you. And more backup dates. Chief, did you have anything? That is all. Um, well, um, as is our policy here, we always want to hear or uh, we give our citizens an opportunity to be heard, um, citizens or delegations. Uh, again, I just want to ask that um, everyone um, speak out of kindness and that we uh, maintain civility and respect for each other. And that having been said, I'll ask, do we have any concerns from citizens or delegations? Yes, I see. Welcome back.
Thank you. You sure you can't stay longer? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Did I see another hand? Okay. Uh, sir, I'm not. Do, your name, please. Mr. Perrin. Okay. Well, excuse me. I said we're going to be civil, and we're going to we're going to be civil. And you, you, yes, sir, you do. But I I must be confused because I thought you started out by saying that you were here to apologize to the police department, and I've missed that somewhere.
Chief, do you want to comment? It's certainly not incumbent upon you to. Thank you, Chief. No problem. Um, now. That's okay. That's how we learn things. Not a, not a problem. Just. Raise your hand the next time, and I'll be happy to recognize you, and then you can ask whatever question you want, okay? All right. Yes, sir. We certainly appreciate those efforts. Uh, not seeing any other uh, hands in the air about wanting to address the council, I would now entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved and seconded, and are we all in agreement? Say aye. Aye. aye.